Hey SPF family, welcome back to step two of our Ever After High House project beginning and middle and budget and everything else. I'm obviously so excited about this here project. So in step two, we're going to talk a little bit about planning. Since the big dollhouse, we, um, I didn't have a budget per se per room. I more had a budget to spend of money per two weeks over a two and a half year period. It was very fair, um, but some of the rooms did get pricier than others. I was just very smart in my shopping. So I waited patiently for prices and things to be in the price I want. In this case, I'm gonna plan ahead. Um, I was challenged by a viewer, and I'm gonna have to look back and see who that was about doing things with cardboard. So, and at a better price, I think is a little more interesting for younger people so that this can be affordable and attainable even on a small allowance, right? Obviously part one was about the box and that was our shipping box 12 by 12. Um, you can check that out. And on our price list I got this at a dollar because it was a dollar for five or two dollars for one so there is the differences. We're going to kind of contrast low and mid middle and high. Middle is where I'm going to try and go for each of these rooms. There's a few things I think you should definitely invest in. The box is one of them. Uh, mostly because they're stronger and size consistent. And it's your foundation so you'd want to be those good. So those can be about a dollar. If you buy ahead and get a couple you can get a dollar in the low end. Next let's look at the walls. The materials needed for that. I got four 12 by 12 paper cardstock which range from $2 to $8 or on the low end you can just get some paper and or get gift wrap. If you find some that have something that's not so Christmassy or birthday like you can get a whole bunch and do a room or a few rooms or ceilings so you have that option to save rooms. Gracie's room has some, some bigger boxes so she's going to use some of those for the walls because 12 by 12 doesn't fit. Now paper and cardstock. Cardstock is a lot thicker than paper and that is the difference between the two. Cardstock selection is not as big as the paper selection so we tend to have to buy paper sometimes. So I say three walls. So obviously I'm starting off with Darling, the first one I got with my gift card from Christmas. So I'm going to be working on her. I have chosen three pieces of cardstock matching for her walls. This is also going to be better when we glue it. It's not going to go through and warp the paper, if you know what I mean. But we'll have tricks to hide that if we do have to use paper. For her floor, I have chosen this piece here which is shiny and fun and then I wanted to show the difference that sometimes the floor ones I had to grab these I'm not sure who I'm using them for but sometimes you got to get paper because it's a better choice in which case I will probably cover it with some Mod Podge as part of my supplies to make it more durable so when you put things in it doesn't you know scratch up and tear your paper. Now as well we have a ceiling here. The ceiling in my case there's a dent in the box so I want to cover it. You could just paint all the walls and that'll bring you down to a buck or two bucks or if you even have paint it costs you nothing. Those are some choices you have for ch change of your budget. But what I am going to do is because this cardboard house is going to be rather plain. I don't want it to look like a kindergartner's cubby hole, so I want to add some decor consistency and continuity. In your own house your trim probably matches or your carpeting matches and things like that. So her ceilings on all rooms I'm going to make the same and I'm going to use this nice soft champagne gold. This was five dollars for I think it was three ninety or five sheets for three ninety nine. So that changes my number here and gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Luckily it was cardstock. I was able to buy all of those ahead. So those are my choices. As for planning, you all know I'm new to Ever After High. 
So I've been doing a list like this. I've been learning who the roommates are. I got notes on who I want to dedicate it to, chapter being which um, room or character we're working on. And so I'm just writing down things I need to know and learning about them. Feel free to jump in in the comments and help me out with all of that stuff because I have a lot of catching up to do. Now making each of these rooms for $20 is not bad. There are some things that are a must to me anyway, but can change for you. So next we're on to the wood bed base. I got these for $1.50. That is this from Michael's. It is the perfect size, which I used a lot in the Monster High dollhouse. And of course any of this stuff can be from Monster High or Bratz or Barbie. She fits on there perfectly. And I really like those, so I'm gonna be a little lazy and not get the cardboard, use the cardboard. Now remember in part one, we cut off two of these off each box and I'm going to save one for shims. And then the second could be used for building, in which case this is what Gracie did on her little bed. See the size is just right, only had to cut some of that, and it even gives you some leftovers for using for other parts of your dollhouse. I really like this thing, so I'm going to use those. And therefore, I got $1.50 on that, that can go up depending on what you use. And as we cardboard, then you got no cost. Next is our bed feet, basically how you rise the bed up so we don't just have a piece of board on the floor. Um, I got this averaged at a dollar for what I've picked. And that can go up to four dollars and even more depending on how you make that. I'm going to use various different things and I will show those per bed per room as I make them. But for the time being, those who watched part um, the video where we intro this whole project know that I got a phenomenal deal on all these dolls, so I was able to go out and buy tons of supplies to get me ready. And of course we have that. Now if we look at Gracie's bed, when she made hers, she used blocks. Sometimes she painted it, sometimes she didn't. That's her favorite. So she does this. So this price was $4.29, but you get one, two, three, four, five, six beds minimum for that price. So that brings that pretty decent on your budget. So it's the same idea with all of these different choices I have. This might be better for a boy or a girl or I want it higher or lower. So I picked all different things to use in many different facets, looks. By the time I paint them, we can make them all different. These bowls actually have a little flat spot once they're on, so they'll work just fine. That price gives you a lot of beds, bed feet, spools the price of those. These ones I splurged on because I thought those would be really cool like that. It has different shapes so I bought two so that's going to be a little bit higher per bed but again we want a little bit of difference. Got some more here. These ones look like little vases. Teeny spools. You can think and look around if you want to bring your budget down to zero again you can take your cardboard cut little squares and then glue them together and then you can have your own size table legs whatever you might be so once you put those underneath and if you make a blanket that's going to cover it it's not going to really matter what that looks like or you can put a piece of ribbon to cover that so that's a really economical way to use it you can use some beads I was, have used that in castas in the big Monster High dollhouse. Set a couple of those on there, and well, more than a couple. You'll probably need many for that, but there's an inexpensive idea. Then you can get creative and look around your house for little boxes and things. So I found these around the house, and those could easily turn into perfect pedestals. And here was another idea, some toothpaste box, which could be a nice high pedestal. And of course, as I said, that puts your cost over here at zero. My range is gonna be approximately a dollar. Well, let's get into fabric for the bedding. 
I've got it from $4 average in my range. Can go $7 plus, of course. And then I got scrap clothes or fabric. The reason I've highlighted this is that if I should find something that I have that's old to use because I save old fabric and old clothes that are cute, or I go thrifting and find something inexpensive, that $4 can go to zero even on mine, and then that can change what I spend in here and what I can spend more on. So that's something that changes quite often. Such as, this was an old leotard of Gracie's that I had bought originally at the thrift store for her dancing, and of course she grew out of it. I paid maybe $1.99 then. I cut it up. This is Blood Goods Comforter in our Big Monster High Doll house now. So that cost me nothing for all the fabric I have that's here. This was an old skirt of mine, a skirt that I adored. Oh my god, it was my favorite skirt ever. I've gotten a whole lot bigger since then. Not even just a little bit, but a whole lot. <laughs> and so I love the colors and the fabric and I cut it up and this was um, oh, Gilda's. Um, comforter and I forget who I used the black for in the underscore so that just keep that in mind and look around and check out other things at the thrift store otherwise I have quite a few different choices here they have these at Joann's which are like 99 cents I believe gives you a good amount and they come separately so you can pick what I'm deciding here, and of course you can switch yours any way you want, for Darling and the doll, I want the doll to pop out of the room, not have her blend into the room. So I'm going to go near their colors, but not exactly their colors. So she will actually pop out from the cube. And these are two things I found for her. I love fabric. I have an addiction to fabric. I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to really have fun with this and just be very colorful and enjoy my addiction to fabric so these two are for her those are 99 cents these are in the quilting section this is going to be I think for Hunter this was something I thought looked very nice for Rosabelle I think I had it for and these are I think this was $7.99 for all this same size but a bunch of them and I can definitely have fun and I can split these and use and split them amongst rooms so that's an idea and of course check your remnant section you can't beat that price and that is a good amount of fabric for a doll bed something different i am doing oh and this one here Ooh. then you can buy by the yard i think you can go down to six inches i could not resist this my i seen faybell i think that's her name faybell <laughs> i seen that so that will definitely be incorporated with her again getting into that decor consistency and continuity I am going to use the same thing I used um, for my cottage for the Boo students. There's that piece we used. You can check this out in the link below. I show all how to make this full bedding set. It's very long. It's very detailed. If you don't know how to sew and know very little about it, this will walk you through the whole thing. So taking this idea, when I do my beds, I'm not going to have flat like uh, here. I like the plush look so when they sit they look like they're sinking into the mattress. So every mattress in every room, I'm going to duplicate this and use this fabric. So I got quite a few yards to get me through 27 rooms. Um, I think it'll, it'll go with my little titches of gold for everybody. And I don't have to think about it too much because technically, once that's covered up, you won't see it. So why pick a crazy new color for each one? crazy new pattern so that'll be covered up it'll be like their mattresses are all the same your eye will see it as a whole in those certain forms of little gold things I'm doing so that will be extra and then of course I will use these fabrics and have fun with the double-sided comforter and play around of course and get extra creative with pillows in any way I want to Moving right along to my list I have. This is optional now. You don't need to do this one. This can range. I got $2.50 and a dollar six to three. Ribbon and trim can get super, super expensive. What I need is two yards. One yard for the baseboard and one yard for the crown. The baseboard is going to be along like the edge bottom here. And I'm going to do that consistent in each room. 
And then of course the crown is the top. So when the ceiling meets the wall, we'll have a piece of trim and that's where I can kind of match up and coordinate with each doll. Very common and it'll clean it up if I have to hide any glue mistakes. So for my baseboard, I specifically have this price which I'm set on. Um, you need one yard, three feet or 36 inches of course to go around 12, 12, 12. I bought a huge ream of this because I know I need a lot. I'm going to have to even um, go buy more as the rooms continue, but I bought them out what they had. So I have decided wholly and solely that this here is going to be my baseboard trim. So on each room, that's another thing about um, regarding continuity and consistency, I'm going to use this as my baseboard trim and everything. So you're seeing a little bit of gold in this, a little bit of gold in the mattress, and a little bit of gold in the um, ceiling. So those things are gonna all come together, I think, and make it look less like that cubby hole thing. Trims can go anywhere. You can use all kinds of things if you do. Have this wishy tape, which is nice. Um, between one of these two, I picked for Darling. I don't remember which one. Um, prices can go anywhere. Of course, you can buy it. Go to the fabric store and buy it per yard. This is one I couldn't resist. And of course, that's for Ginger. Then your price ranges can go everywhere. You can look for... And remember, if you save some money up here and find some fabric, you can go back and forth. So I got that for like a bed trim or a bed skirt. And then prices can range anywhere between the dollar store and the fabric stores or uh, passing holidays. Oh, Christmas is a great time to get trim. Even if you see that price, it could be half off or something. And of course, they can get very pricey too, but you have quite a few yards on there. This one's four feet, so you'd have some extra for trimmings, which helps out. Um, yeah, sometimes they can get even, oh, they can get really expensive. Wonder who that one's for. Headboards. The fun of the creativity of any doll room is the headboard, right? So many choices again. And this changes, your headboard changes everything down here depending on what you spend. I have it as $2, go up to $5 plus. That one can go way up um, depending on your choices and what you pick. I'm going to do an average of $2 and that might even change. Gracie has been doing cardboard, so hers was a big fat zero, and that would be this style, where she just cut out a piece of that fabric, or I'm sorry, a piece of that cardboard, and wrapped it with fabric. Choices are pretty endless on this too, and of course that can come off your piece. You cut off the original 99 cent $1 box. So you can decorate that any way you choose, of course. Endless amounts of fabric, you can paint it, you can... You can just do anything. That's where your creativity, your thinking outside the box, your style, your theme all can show. So that would be on the zero side. Or you can go into a little bit fancier, um, which still doesn't have to be pricey. I want mine to, ch I am going to use this style so I can get different shapes. So that's not out of the woods for my budget. But at the same time, I want to make some of them easy and switch up my looks. So I found all these different things for different prices. This one even has this rectangular, so that one can go this way or that way, stuck to the wall. Another reason why that cardstock is nice, because if we glue these to the wall, then it's going to be more secure. Um, so that price, I forget how much those were, I think it was $3 for that. And then just try to really think outside the box, I'm thinking maybe for the hunter or one of the boys that can be incorporated there. Then I have some leftovers from the Monster High dollhouse. I'll tell you one thing, picking these things off the tags is the worst. So I can back that with something, fabric, cardboard, paint, whatever, and I can do that as a headboard. And I found some other ones that are quite beautiful too. I'm seeing Cupid and Lizzie Hearts in that one. And the choices are endless for that. So again, if you go to Cardboarder here, 
you can save two dollars and spend your money more on the next batch of items which is where it gets fun too now we're on this last part a whole lot going on here and remember what I was saying if you save some money up here you can spend more down here and I'm gonna do this all as a whole because just it can interchange so much depending on each room and you can also make a lot of these things or make a lot of these things find yourself a piece of old fabric or clothes and then buy spend a little more here paint of course I've got a dollar budgeted in but at the same time you might have your own paint if you're a crafter so obviously you can take that off but what I am going to do is pick one paint um, for something in the continuity department and one paint probably per doll room. I have a good selection of paint so I'm good to go. A lot going on here. So we're talking about wall art, window, door, side table furniture, accessories. Accessories in general. I'm going to make a door. You've seen part one. You've seen my very crude little sketch. And I'm going to use, I got some more cardstock, the five. I'm going to split cut that into three doors. I think it is three or four. I'm going to use this to make it appear like it has trim. And I bought just this one strand, which has enough for little doorknobs for every single room, which is another titch of continuity. What I haven't found is a little something to use as a light. And I was hoping it would be crystal pink like this to go with the Ever After High theme. Then when we talk about side tables, lots of ideas lots and lots these are all I got it at a dollar yeah a dollar um, that can go up and down depending on um, blocks this actually had a handle and I broke that off so I can turn it over and over turn it around and then it kind of looks like a tree stump so then remember my foe you can check out our tutorial that I did in the cottage um, in the big monster high doll house so I can use paint treatments to make these things be endless ideas and ways to do things so that can turn into a stump a tree stump little trinket boxes be it you buy them I think they're 50 cents all different sizes and shapes or you have them around the house they all work as well um, I can put trim around them anything those would be per room we'll see differences in that more of these trinket boxes these ones are a dollar and they come in various shapes and sizes. I got pretty much one of each different style they had at the store so I can interchange. And then this one, I was thinking maybe mirror shards, a little trinket box with a lid, another idea, only a dollar. As well, if you're trying to save some money so you can spend on accessories, look around the house and be creative with boxes. So I got some, let me make a little room here. I have some, boxes I use and things around the house that can easily be made into a side table. Got some spice jars. You can put a lid on that and paint it. Um, shaving cream tops can use as is for a footstool or if a side table put something on it. This one could be like that with a long table or it could be a high table or you could cut it in half and put this on and have two tables. You got a toothpick thing, you could turn this way. Any little extra box, put a lid on it or a top on it. So there's many choices for your little side table, whether you want to spend a dollar or two or make something and spend your money on other things. The next thing I'm doing is wall art window and door. Okay, we already discussed door. You know in part one, I talked about the windows. It's another bit of thing I want to do with continuity. Um, so they're all similar and they look the same to your eye. You don't have that cubby look. So I bought one paint um, for all of them so I have the same color. This is the first time I've used this. I got that from Target. I bought this for if any of my ribbons or whatever. It's um, puffy paint, dimensional paint, just for filling in any cracks that should get me through the whole house. These are going to be my windows. I'm going to sponge paint those with a blue sky. I'm going to use some Sharpie and just make a crisscross. I'm going to use these. The whole pack I think was $4. One for each room as the valance. And to put the fabric on the back, we'll show you that. And then in each corner for a finial, I'm going to do hearts because I thought hearts worked well for the um, Ever After High theme. 
And what else do we have? How much money do you got left? How much can you work with? Where have you saved or where can you splurge? So then we get accessories. I always have a look in the clearance section. That one is obviously going to be for her, I believe. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't really like that black with her. So that's a maybe change my mind. Endless supplies and choices for things. I think you can see who some of them are. You can get them on sale. Easter was around, so they'll find that. I'm thinking that for Bunny, maybe. I don't know. All different little things, though. There's another little Bunny detail. So I'm definitely ahead of the curve between um, embellishments, buttons, accessories, fabrics. There's lots to choose from and for the $20 per budget. It's a lot taken. Hopefully I only got to watch this video once though to get the hang of it and see where we're at. And I hope it helps you plan. Some things that were not in this budget, just kind of in the whole room budget to have around sundries is obviously the tacky glue. Um, I've already made the 30 boxes and I'm only at about here so that's going to last me a long time. Mod Podge is handy. I got some duct tape that I'm going to edge the sides of the rooms with. Packing tape, that um, was I think $1.50 or $2. I've used one of those so far for all 30 boxes. When we get to decorating, museum wax, best stuff in the world. We got a tutorial on how to use that. So when I do start putting accessories, this is, happens to be from Gulia's room, once you wax those all in, it certainly makes things a lot easier, especially in a cardboard, so if it gets bumped, it won't fall over. Let's move on to making some of these rooms, or the first one anyway, and as you can see, I have a lot of supplies and a lot of work ahead of me, but I'm looking forward to it. Super Buddies Forever has moved into it. Ever yeah. after high, we're committed now. Stay tuned for part three where we use all this planning and all these supplies and finally begin making rooms. There'll be lots of options and you'll be able to use the techniques I use if you like or divert from them and make your own plans. On our way, yippee skippy. See you next time.